New agents in real estate are always asking me, what are the top things I need to do to get started? What are the top systems I need, the top tools? You know, all the stuff real estate. The number one thing that I can recommend that you get right off the bat is a CRM, a Customer Relationship Management Program. Somewhere you can put all your information about your clients and your potential clients, right? So it's got name, phone number, email, but it also will hook up to the backside of your website so you can actually see some of their activity that they're doing on the website in order to make sure that you're sending them properties that are a good fit. You also can put in there their closing date after you sell them a home and all the notes and all the stuff that has to do pertaining to that particular client. The cool thing with the, the current CRM we have is we have a phone dialer system that's connected to our CRM so literally all the phone calls that happen are documented right there in the system. Any text messages that go out, boom, they're right there in the back end. So you can always go back and reference them if you're ever thinking like, when did I talk to that person? When did they come in as a new lead? How many times have we communicated? So you can keep track of all those things. So that actually shows the entire fucking alarm. It shows the entire customer journey going back until the lead came into your system. So that is one of the top things I can recommend getting right off the bat. We've used multiple CRMs over the year. <clears throat> I'm lucky Jackie, my director of operation, didn't quit because we have changed from Boomtown to Rio Geeks to Chime to Sierra to Follow Up Boss. Yes, I am a recovering alcoholic, but now I'm addicted to CRMs. <laughs> Hi, my name's Mark, and I'm a CRMic. Huh? So FUB is the best CRM, the one we have currently, that I've ever used. FUB stands for Follow Up Boss, right? Click the link below, get a couple week uh, trial with them, but I guarantee it will change the way your business is run. The second thing I get most questions about from agents is, well, where do you keep everything? Where do you store everything? We have multiple places and multiple apps, multiple tools that we use for document storage, electronic signatures, communication, right? You have to have a good tech stack when you get into the real estate world. This is not 1982. We're not sending faxes over to each other. We're not calling each other on a rotary phone. We're not writing contracts on the hood of our car anymore. This is a digital world, so you better know how to use the tech tools and to be able to get to a complete deal in closing, right? Dot loop, we use that for our, our signatures. Why? We love the flexibility of it. You got loops that's basically like a file that keeps all the documents from the transaction all in one place. A lot of brokerages have one that they may use that goes tied with their CRM. We use one outside because it has all of my documentation going back to 2016. So I've got every file I've ever had all in one place for every closing we've had. The next thing we use is Google Drive. Awesome tool, right? Especially when you have a growing team. We've got 15 plus agents now. We've got you know office staff, um, international people on our team, and ultimately we all have access to the same information, right? Everybody gets a login, everybody can go in there, we can share documents without having to send emails back and forth with 6,000 attachments, and then, oh, I made a change to it, now I'm gonna send it back to you. It's cloud-based, so everybody can have um, the ability to go in there, make changes on the fly. We can be in, the, in, in a document at the same time and actually see what the other person's doing. It's very user-friendly. Another tool we have is Slack. If you haven't heard of Slack before, it's not, it's kind of like for slackers that don't keep up their Slack. So. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Well, it really is not why it's called Slackers, but it's called Slack. It is awesome. It's almost like a messaging tool. It's almost like an app, but it's, 
it is an app. It's not almost like one, it is one. But it's almost like a messaging app. It's almost like sending a text message, but it's like a text on steroids because you could literally create separate threads based on, we use it for property addresses. Now our entire team, our entire staff can all communicate about that particular property and keep everything kind of nice and neat in one place as opposed to, a text me message over here to John about one, two, three, Banana Street. Well, John's also got four, five, six Banana Street under contract. Well, which one are we talking about? You know, and you get all confused. Here, it's very segmented, very easy to make sure you log into the right one and you can keep all your communication together and everybody has access to it. You can also put links in there. You can upload photos. So when we go on a listing appointment, we create a Slack channel for that particular address any information that we've gathered from the potential seller before we go on that appointment, it's all right there. It's all at our hands. So when I go walking through the house, I can snap a bunch of pictures, upload them right to the Slack channel, and boom, everybody on the team has access to them. So it's a very helpful tool. Another helpful tool to help you build your real estate business is social media posting software, right? There's some different programs out there that will allow you to schedule all of your social media. So you've got this funny little meme that you found and you wanna send it, but it's like 10 o'clock at night. Well, is that gonna get a lot of visibility then? No, we use this scheduling software that'll post it tomorrow when the most people are actually on Facebook looking for your goofy little meme that you think is cute and funny that you wanna make sure everybody sees. Truth though, you wanna find a software that you can use and work. We've used Hootsuite in the past. We've used Spout Social. We've also, Facebook also now has a schedule or built into it so you can schedule your posts through there. But you wanna do research. Don't just post because you came across something and, and you're, like, you're gonna share it and you think it's funny and it's cute and it's eight o'clock at night. You have to be strategic about when you are posting on Facebook so you have the most eyeballs on the actual post and you have the most engagement with the content you're sharing. So it's not who posts the most content that wins, although we're doing a great job, it's who posts the most content at the right times to have the most eyeballs. And it's not about the most likes and comments and all this stuff because guess what? I get calls all the time. We don't have a shit ton of engagement on our posts and our stuff but every time I talk to somebody, they mention one of the posts. So guess what? They're seeing it, they're remembering it, and they're repeating it back to me. They may not heart it, they may not like it, because do you think people like, their whole day is like, God, I can't see it. Can't wait to see how many posts I can heart today. Like, no, you do it randomly. It's not like it's like, they're not telling you no, they don't like you, they're rejecting you because they didn't get, they didn't heart it, they didn't like it. I didn't get any comments. It is exposure. It is that constant staying in their face, reminding them what you do, and that you're gonna be the one that they should come to when it's time for them to make a decision about buying or selling real estate. You know, for the longest period, I had that like imposter syndrome, like nobody's gonna like my post, I can't do video, nobody's gonna like my shit, like get over yourself. Put the stuff out there, people are seeing it whether they engage or not, and you will be the realtor of choice if you stay in front of the people. Because remember, we've talked about this before, it is not their job to remember what you do, it is your job to remind them on a consistent basis. People will forget who you are and what you do the second they get off social media, but if they're in, you're in front of them repeatedly, consistently providing value. Not just like, hey, buy or sell your house with me, I, I can use the business. No, like, hey, these are the top things to do when you're buying a home. These are the top things to do when you're selling a home. Hey, check out this new listing I have over here on 123 Banana Street. It's great for in-laws or outlaws or whatever, whoever you wanna put in the house, right? Constant value, staying in front of the consumer with consistent message of value will keep you top of mind when it's time for them to make a decision. The final thing you should focus on when building your real estate business is your email marketing software, right? You can send what they call batch emails directly from your CRM or these like mass emails. Like you do not wanna do that from your Google, your Yahoo, your Hotmail, your AOL, like 
AOL.com. You don't want to send it from those accounts. You want to make sure you have a basically an email service provider that's like built for sending bulk email. MailChimp, SendGrid, Infusionsoft. Those companies all have a platform built for sending mass email. They also have a nice dashboard on the back end so you can see uh, deliver a bit. Deliver a bit deliverability results. You can also see open rates and you can track that because if you're going to start sending email marketing to people, you don't just like, oh, I got 5,000 people. Send off into the abyss. I have no idea. <laughs> Sent out 5,000. I win. I am the king. Well, did they all end up in spam? Did they, did no one open them? Did everybody open them? Did no one call you? Did everyone call you? Like, you don't know. You have to have some sort of back end on your email delivery system so you can actually see the results that came from your action. Another thing with your email is make sure you have a call to action. Not on every single email. Sometimes you need to go like jab, jab, right hook, value, value, pitch, value, value, pitch, right? You wanna make sure that you're providing value so when you do ask for something, and I've never heard it put better than John Chaplak says, it's making deposits into the business consumer equity account, right? I'm depositing value into our relationship account, right? Give you value, give you value, give you value. Now I can ask for your business. Me walking up to you and saying, can I have your business? I've, I've given you nothing. I've given you no value. What, what have I shown you that I can do for you besides ask for something? Give value, give value, give value, then ask.